Welcome to this review of basic cryptographic primitives, which is the first module of our course on zero knowledge. In this module, I will talk shortly about the DVM and key exchange protocol, the discrete log problem, and algorithm encryption. The reason I do this is because it provides a gentle introduction into the arithmetic modulo of prime number. I'll also talk a bit about elliptic curves, algorithms for finding discrete logarithm, digital signatures based on discrete log, and I'll talk about hash function. But first look at this protocol. I call it the mother of all cryptographic protocols. We have Alice and Bob. Maybe Alice lives in the United States, Bob lives in Japan. They are connected through some unreliable channel and they want to communicate privately. So we assume the existence of an encryption algorithm with, which takes as input the message and which also takes as input the private key K and the output is a ciphertext C. This ciphertext is received by Bob. Bob uses his own key to decrypt the ciphertext to obtain M prime, and of course, M prime should be equal to M. In the case of the advanced encryption standard, we have uh, standardized lengths. Um, the key size has to be at least 128 bits, but there are other options are possible. Of course, besides AES, there are dozens and dozens of, of um, symmetric algorithms. Um, it's, it's been a well, well established area of cryptography. However, one question that always arrives is this, how do Alice and Bob agree on their secret key? This used to be a big problem and it was brilliantly solved by Diffie and Hellman in the following protocol. I should note that this protocol was invented one year before RSA was invented. So what is this protocol? Well, we suppose that Alice and Bob, they, they agree on some parameters like the prime number P and a generator G. A generator is an element such that all the powers of G will work through all the elements modulo P, but in some uh, randomized order. So the protocol is as follows. Alice will choose a random number A, which is her secret exponent, and she will compute G to the power A to obtain uppercase A, which she sends to Bob. Now, Bob does exactly the same thing, except, of course, that he uses a different random number, B, different secret exponent, and computes uppercase B, sends B to Alice. Now, upon receiving the message from Bob, Alice will take her secret exponent and compute B to the power A, which results in her version of the key. Bob does exactly the same thing. So Bob takes the message received from Alice, uses his secret exponent and will compute his version of the key. Now it turns out by simple mathematics that these two keys are the same. So this is the, the, the key that um, Alice and Bob agree on. Note that there isn't so much an exchange of a key, but there is an establishment of the key uh, going on in this protocol. Now the adversary gets to see all the messages. So the adversary gets to see the, the prime P, the generator G, um, and the messages sent by Alice and by Bob. And so one thing, for instance, that the adversary can do, it can, can multiply the two messages. But in doing so, this will only give uh, g to the power a plus b, whereas the value that the adversary is after is g to the power a times b. So this isn't really what the adversary needs. Now you can wonder, so suppose that the adversary is capable of computing um, computing lowercase a given a. 
Now this is exactly the following the following problem. Um, so what we call a discrete logarithm, the following the following thing. So let p be a prime number and g be a generator, and suppose that h is equal to g to the power x modulo p. That we say that x is a discrete logarithm of h modulo p. So we should be careful in the sense that um, this value is determined by the prime number and it is also determined by the generator g. But otherwise it makes all sense to call it a logarithm because this is exactly what logarithms are also over the real, the real numbers. So here we have an example. We, we choose p equal to 11, g equal to 2. In that case we can say that 6 is the discrete logarithm of 9 because 2 to the power 6 results in 64, which is sh too short of 66. Um, so it means that it's uh, congruent to 9 modulo 11. So 2 to the power 6 is equals 9. So that means that 6 is the dis discrete logarithm of 9. Now, the, the discrete logar logarithm problem is the following. So, suppose that we have given p, g, and h, then the question is to find the exponent, the logarithm of uh, h in this, in this equation. And we make the following assumption, that the discrete logarithm problem is difficult. Um, so, computing, so, so what I'm saying is this, if I choose g, x, and p, maybe um, x and p will be uh, 2000 bits long, and I will compute h, h equals g to the power x, and now I'm giving you g, h, and p, but I'm not giving you x, and I'm asking you to compute x for me. Well, it's very unlikely you will be able to do that. So this is what we call the discrete log problem. It's, it's similar to, to factoring um, and it's very useful in cryptography. Now, so it's very clear if you look at this slide, if you, if you can compute the discrete log problem, then you can solve, you can attack the Diffie-Hellman key exchange because you simply compute lowercase a and lowercase b from uppercase a and uppercase b and you just add a and b modulo p minus 1. So, but the opposite isn't actually true uh, because there's sort of incompatibility with the inputs. The thing is this, if you analyze the Diffie-Hellman key protocol, then what, what you will get is that the adversary gets to see g and p and a and b, and what the adversary wants, it wants to compute a value c such that g is the product of the secret exponents of Alice and of Bob. Um, and this is, this is what essentially what uh, the adversary wants because that product g to the a times b is, is the value of the key. But it turns out that given this algorithm, you cannot really turn it directly into an algorithm for computing the discrete log. So the Diffie-Hellman assumption is stronger than the discrete log assumption. And one can draw the conclusion that a lot of cryptography is based on this assumption. There's a lot of theory behind this, but this is not the, the topic of our, our course. Um, but I want to show you this, this version, the Diffie-Hellman key exchange combined with the algorithmic, uh, the advanced encryption standard. So what I did, I rearranged a little bit the arrows here. It's now it's B who starts and not uh, Alice who starts, but otherwise it's exactly the same protocol. However, the key now is used as the an encryption key for the AAS encryption algorithm. So this is what the, the last step is sort of additional to the whole, the whole protocol. 
Um, but here's the interesting thing is that um, though, though the, this line here now is a, a conceptual separation, Alice actually can send A and C in the same message. So even though it's, it's conceptually two messages, it, it can be combined into one message. And, and then another interesting way to see this is to look at the Algamal encryption. Um, now, instead of using the key with AES, what we're going to do is we're going to take the message and multiply the message with this key K to obtain the, the ciphertext C. So this is a multiplication going on in um, the multiplicative group modulo, modulo P. And this is sort of like a, a one-time pad. This is not the one-time pad modulo 2 or modulo M. It's a multiplication, but it's still it's a one-time pad thing. Um, so this is this is why why the security of this encryption is equivalent. Um, so on the receiver side, Bob will use the the private key K will need to compute the inverse, and this will will compute M prime, which is uh, his version of the of the message. So this is a, a very simple way to understand uh, the Algamal encryption as an application of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So it's important that Alice chooses a different message, a different exponent A for each message. If not, the system is not secure. Um, this gives the Algamal encryption a probabilistic flavor unlike RSA, and actually this is a very strong, very good property. Um, we, can, we can show that Algamal encryption is, is, has properties which are stronger than, than RSA. And note that the complete ciphertext is a pair, the pair capital A with C, which is a pair in, in, in this, this group, which is uh, written there. So what's interesting to note is that Diffie-Hellman key exchange and Algamal encryption can be generalized to other groups. Um, we note that the protocols were originally developed for the multiplicative group modulo, modulo P. This is a cyclic group of order P minus one, but you could apply this, these protocols to any cyclic group. Um, now, for these operations to be efficient, the group operation should be efficient. And to be secure, we would need the discrete logarithm to be hard on the group. So we, of course, we, we are worried about security, so, so it's not just efficiency. We need groups in which the discrete log logarithm problem is hard.